Okay, in this module 27, we start to get into the concept of combining functions. So there are five ways that you can combine functions. You can um, add two functions together. So let's say you have a function f of x and you know its domain and its range. And then you have the function g of x and you know its domain and its range. Okay. And if you don't know what the domain and range or domain is, you can find the domain very easily, right? We've practiced that already in the past. Okay. So there's two kinds of um, things that can happen. You can add two functions together, and this is the notation that you'll use. But essentially what you're doing is you're taking f of x and you're adding g of x to it. Okay. And you simplify and combine like terms if you can. So that's one operation that you can do. Another operation you can do is subtract. So you can take one function, whatever's in the front here, and minus the second function. Whatever's behind the minus has to stay behind the minus. Okay. Then we can multiply fractions. Or no, I'm sorry, not fractions. We can multiply functions. They may be fractions, maybe not. And then just distribute everything and combine your like terms, right? You can divide fractions. Just make sure when you're rewriting it, whoever was on the top needs to stay at the top, and whoever was at the bottom needs to stay at the bottom. Now for these three kinds of um, combining, when you want the domain of regardless what it is, whether it's f plus g, or f minus g or f times g. If you're finding the domain of any one of these, it's just going to be the domain of f um, intersect with the domain of g. Okay, so you find both domains, find where the two domains overlap, and that'll be the domain of each of these three combinations. This one is different because we have a fraction. So, yes, if you want to do f over g, you do get the domain of f intersect the domain of g like you do with all these others, but you have to take out where g is equal to zero, okay? Because you cannot have g of x equal to zero. So once you figure out what this interval looks like, you're going to basically remove any x values that make the denominator zero. And the denominator is g, so you find all the values of g that equal 0. The last kind of combination that we haven't put in here yet is what's called the composition. Okay, And so it looks like a little circle. Okay, And what that means is whatever's on the outside stays on the outside. Oh, I forgot the x. They always have an x. And then whatever's on the inside is going to be on the inside, okay? So essentially what this means is you're going to plug in this function into the other function, okay? So you're not adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. You're actually taking one whole function and plugging it into the other function, okay? And so you could get something like this, right? Well, now g is on the outside, so f of x is what gets plugged in. So pay special attention to who's on the outside and who's on the inside. The one on the inside is the one that gets plugged in. The one on the outside is what it gets plugged into. Okay. And the domains here and the ranges here are a little bit tricky, so we'll talk about those specifically when we get to those sections. Okay. So what they want us to do for this first topic is... It says combining functions to write a new function that models a real world situation. So we have a car rental, um, car rentals company. Standard charge includes an initial fee plus an additional fee for each mile. Driven. The standard charge S in dollars is given by the function S equals this amount, where M is the number of miles driven. The company also offers an option to insure the car against damage. The insurance charge 
i in dollars is given by the function i equals 0.5m plus 580. Let C be the total charge in dollars for a rental that includes insurance. So if this is the cost for the insurance, this is the cost for the um, rental, how do you figure out the total cost? What you do is you take the cost of the rental and you add the insurance, right? But it wants me to write an equation relating C to M, simplifying your answer as much as possible, which means the only variables they want in the equation are C and M. And I have S and I, so I cannot use these letters here. But what I can do is use the expressions that represent these letters. So S is equivalent to this. So I'm going to plug in that for S. And then I have an expression for I, which is this, and I'm gonna plug that in for I. Now here, because it's plus, the parentheses may not be necessary. But if this were a minus, it would make a difference whether or not the parentheses are there or not. So just out of habit, when you're plugging in the entire portion, always use parentheses. So here, there's no number to multiply in the front, no exponent to apply. So I don't technically need the parentheses that are in the front. Here, if I multiply by a positive one, that's going to stay a positive 0.5. And if I multiply by a positive one here, that's going to stay a positive 580. So all I need to do is simplify my answer as much as possible. So I'm going to combine my like terms. And I don't know what that is. 18.95 plus 5.80. 24.75. So this is the cost, the total cost. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. So now this talks about finding the difference quotient for a linear or for a quadratic formula. Well, the first thing you need to know is what the heck is a difference quotient, okay? Um, and I believe they use H in the computer. It really doesn't matter what the other variable is, but a difference quotient is this fraction here, F of X plus H minus F of X over H, okay? That's the difference quotient. So you're taking a difference and you're taking a quotient, a division at the same time. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna plug that in here. Now what I like to do is I like to figure out what this is. I know what f of x is. This is f of x. So I know what I'm gonna be subtracting. But what is f of x plus h? That I don't know. So I like to figure out what does that look like before I start plugging things in, okay? And what it means is wherever there was an x in my function, I'm now going to replace it with x plus h. And I can simplify that by distributing the 4. And I really can't simplify that any further. But at least now I have an expression for f of x plus h. So if I want to do the difference quotient, I'm going to take f of x plus h and put it in the front, put a minus sign, and then plug in the f function. And remember what we mentioned in the last um, problem. When you're plugging in an entire function, be sure to use parentheses. So here I have no coefficient, no exponent. I don't necessarily need these parentheses, but here I have a negative one to distribute. So that gives me negative 4x and positive 6. <coughs> Excuse me. So that will simplify by canceling terms, and the 6s will cancel as well. I'll end up with 4h over h. Then the h's can reduce, and I end up with the value just 4. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for this other function. Okay. And I believe it's missing a label. It should say f of x equals this. 
So I still need to figure out what f of x plus h looks like. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in x plus h. And then I'm going to simplify. I have to apply my exponents before I can multiply. So remember what an exponent means. It means that thing times itself. So I'm going to multiply it. x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared. And I'm going to combine my like terms so I get two xh's. Then finally, I'm going to multiply my coefficients in. So 5x squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 2. And none of these are like terms. So I know exactly what x plus f of x plus h looks like. So when it comes to me writing my difference quotient, I'm going to have this entire thing minus the original function, which is just 5x squared minus 3x minus 2 over h. Again, the first parentheses does not have anything to multiply by and does not have an exponent to apply, so I don't technically need those parentheses. But this side does have a negative 1 that needs to be distributed. So I get negative 5x squared, positive 3x, and positive 2. So then the 5x squareds will cancel, the negative 3x and 3x will cancel, and the 2, and, oh, this should have been plus, so then it turns into a negative. Right, the original function had a plus. So when I distribute the negative, it'll become a negative, and then that negative will cancel with this positive. So what do I have left? I have 10xh plus 5h squared minus 3h, all over h. Now there are two ways you can simplify this, okay? And either one of them is correct, and either both of them will give you the same answer. So one way to simplify this is to factor out the common factor, which is h. And then the h's will reduce, giving you an x plus 5h minus 3. The other way to simplify that is to take each term in the numerator and put it over the denominator individually. And then simplify each fraction individually. In any case, you end up with the same exact expression, okay? So this is still the answer. Notice that it still has h's and it still has x's in it, and that is okay. All they want you to do is simplify as much as possible, even if it doesn't simplify all the way down to a number.